When most people think of record stores, they imagine a cool, laid-back place where music fans can hang out, buy records, and listen to music. Now with the easy access to direct downloads such as MP3s and CDs, record stores may seem to be a little old-fashioned. But here in Knoxville, Tennessee, they are still strong as ever, with many independent stores still doing business today. I sat down and talked to the owners of three record stores here in Knoxville. They shared some stories about running a business and talked about the special appeal of vinyl. My name is Maria Armstrong and I'm the owner of Lost and Found Records. My name's Jack Stiles. I'm a co-owner of Raven Records and Rarities along with uh, Mr. J Nations. Here in Happy Holler, as we call it, in North Central Knoxville, Tennessee. My name is Matt Atkinson. I'm the owner of uh, Basement Records in Knoxville, Tennessee. My first memory of vinyl, uh, my mother's records. She had a lot of records. Whenever I was young, I would go in there and listen to her records. Going into a record store, oh golly, probably when I was around seven, I went in and I was a I'd heard Kiss. I'd actually seen them on a TV show at, at late night, and or, you know, late night for a child that age, and uh, decided I had to have a Kiss record. And I got to talk to my mother into buying me a Kiss record, and that was pretty much the start of it. Uh, when I was about 12 or 13, I guess uh, there was a record store downtown here in Knox. I grew up here on the mall called Tucker's. And you'd walk in, it was a record store, but it was also, it had candy and cigarettes and sodas and stuff. But just going in there and seeing, that's the first time I'd ever seen a bunch of records in one place. And um, what did I buy? I think I bought a Roy Orbison 45, I think. You know, I can't say that I can remember the first time I went to a store. When I was little, we used to buy lot, most of our records at White Way and Kmart and Zares and places like that. Um, there was a record store in Fountain City called Records and Things that um, we used to go into a lot, but uh, most of my records actually came from department stores and my 8-tracks too, of course. So. Actually, um, my husband, Mike Armstrong, that was something that was a dream of his to, uh, to have a record store. He was a 1990 and records were basically, um, they, were, they weren't pressing many anymore and everything had gone CD and Mike just always felt like if we could get good records that we could find people to buy them. Um, I didn't necessarily, I wasn't sure of that. Um, because I, I, I did think that people were getting rid of their records and that, you know, but he just really felt like he could always, you know, if we could find good records that we could always sell them. And he was right. So we, uh, I was like, okay, let's do this. My father always wanted his own business and never had it. And I was like, let's try it, let's do it, but I'm not borrowing a bunch of money to open up a record store. And so we didn't. And we opened a tiny little store um, in West Knoxville and it went great. He was right, and I completely fell in love with the business, just completely. Um, more so, I think, he, he loves the record end of it, but I, I enjoyed the, the retail end of it too, on top of, you know, selling the record. So, um, it just it just worked out. It was just one of those things that, that worked out, and it has been the, the greatest thing we ever did was open the store, so. Yeah, well, my partner, Jay, has, uh, he, he chose to do it uh, out of school, he ran into a situation where he was able to buy out. He first worked at a, at a record store, and he was able to buy out the guy that owned that, and so it just mushroomed from there. And uh, the appeal is obvious. You get to run around and try to find records, and then you get to run your own business, and that that, that is normally, that's mostly appealing to uh, folks who aren't using. And then when he called me, I was at this time working in the corporate world this whole time. And, but I was doing my collectible stuff on the side whenever I had time, weekend shows and that kind of stuff. And he called me and I was fed up with the corporate world, so he had been out of retail for a little over a decade, if not longer, probably more like 15 years. 
wanted to get back in it. I wanted to see if I wanted to combine the collectibles with the records, and here we are. Uh, there, there's no comparison. When it comes to MP3s, they don't even sound as close to CDs. It's compressed sound, obviously. And CDs, while are, they're very high and they sound very good. I don't have, I'm not such a vinyl tricky that, I, that, I, that I, I think CDs are obsolete. CDs to me sound great, but they just don't have the feel that vinyl has and, and, and the warmth. Now, with, you get some metal, seriously heavy, heavy metal that's really garbled. It's hard to really get the difference sometimes. You know, you, you can't, you'd have to really have some special ears to hear the difference. But with a lot of things, you can tell the difference instantly. There's things that on some old vinyls, on pressings, that you, even with a CD, you can't get. You know, there's there maybe a shaker in the back. You know, that's going on that you hear on the vinyl. And you're like, try to find it on the CD, or especially on an MP3, and you'd never find it. Yeah, and that's and another thing about MP3s, they're so clinical. You have nothing. You have a printout. You know, if if that's if you want to print it out, if you want something tangible from it, you'd have to print out a list of your MP3 songs. But other than that, that you, that you don't have any of that. I love just being able to, to put on a record and sit down and like read the liner notes or read the lyric sheet. Um, I, I, don't, I just, I feel like you just connect more with, with, what, with the, the artist and the, you know, just everything, just, um, I love it all. I love that, you know, if it's got a little pop in it, I like that. It's, you know, you're listening to a Billie Holiday record, you know, you're supposed to hear a little static, a little pop or something. It's not supposed to be all cleaned up and, you know, compressed and, and all that. It's, um, there's just, there's nothing like it. You know, you play it and you put it on side eight ends and, oh, it's, it's like a labor of love. Oh, side two now. It's, you know, flip the record over, listen to the second side. It just, there's nothing like it. Knowing as I do growing up with it, and I'm not coming to the party late, is that it does, first of all, sound better. There's a richness to a record playing that you don't get on any other format, particularly on today's formats and the bits and the iPods and the I everything else, and even CDs. It's just a rich, vibrant feeling and that, you, that you can hear, and that's the appeal. And seeing, thumbing through the racks and seeing, uh, seeing album covers, like I said earlier, bringing back nostalgic memories. Uh, it's, just, it's just a whole different vibe on both sides of the equation, nostalgia and technical. The people are understanding that more now, that the CD craze was a lie. The record companies just lied. It doesn't sound better, it's just more convenient. And that's why they did it. They could make them cheaper, and that's why they phased out vinyl the first go around. It wasn't because it was a better, you know, sounding quality you were getting, they just lied about that, pure and simple. It was a bottom line decision. Smaller, get more in a place, there you go. I think it mainly is because the, uh, your generation wants a couple of bands that you liked, got on board and released a record and you bought it and you played it and you talked to maybe your parents or, or even your grandparents for that matter. Uh, and you listened to it, you sat down and listened and said, wait, hey, wait a minute, this does sound a lot better. It really does. And, and once the newer bands got on board, uh, uh, then the, the audience followed and they realized that records are the way to go and always have been. See, CDs are a convenience. I'm not knocking them, and an you know, iPad is a convenience. But that's what it is. It's not a musical, it's not a way to really listen to music. It's just a convenience. You can't put a record player in your car, and you can't carry it around on your back. And, stick headphones on. So that's a convenience, just like anything else. But it's the same thing, you know, records are steak, and CDs and the other formats are frozen dead. I think there might be a few, that, that it might be a trend a little bit, but for the most part, no. I think people are really just, you know, once, once uh, you know, the vinyl went away and now that CDs are going away, people want an actual physical copy of, you know, liner notes are important, artwork is important, um, you don't get all that, you know, you download one song, you don't, you don't get the whole feel of the whole record, you know, um, so no, I really, I think for the most part, the people that, like I said, you've always got one or two that, oh, I'm buying records now because my friend is, but that, 
No, it's it's mostly, in my opinion, I, I think the people that, once you start playing them, there's nothing like it. It's just, it takes you somewhere that you just, you can't really explain. Record Store Day is a celebration nationwide of independent record stores. Um, basically, we're just celebrating the fact that we're all still here and that we're selling records. And um, that's pretty much, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's also like a big customer appreciation day. Um, we cook, we have live bands, um, we have beer. I don't know if you want me to say that or not, but we. <laughs> We get really busy. Last year when I got here at 8 in the morning, there were people lined outside down the sidewalk waiting to get in, and we didn't open until 10, and one fella had been here since 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, there's special releases that come out that day that only mom and pop stores get. Um, the, the, the Walmarts and the Targets can't get them. It's just, you know, just the independent shops can get them. So um, a lot of people that, that, you know, collect certain artists or whatever, the only way they can get that 12-inch single with that version of whatever on it, they, you know, they have to get it in a store like ours. So, um, and a lot of it's very limited, so they'll stand out there all night long just to try to get, you know, that single on red vinyl or whatever, so pretty cool. Uh, we we kind of low-key it a little bit. We have special deals going on throughout the store, not just on records, but all the collectibles as well. And we'll have, you know, buy one, get one specials, dollar specials. We'll give away a lot of free stuff, open early, and maybe give people coffee and donuts, things like that. We don't overwhelm anything, but it, it's a nice, it's a nice little low-key thank you for being our patrons kind of thing. become attuned to the fact that this is the preferred method of listening to music, period. And it always will be. It never, it always has been, really, since the LP was invented. And um, like I said, those of us of this generation, my generation, it, it never went away, period. We've always had records, always will, and always uh, have listened to, to the vinyl. <clears throat> and that's the... Um, and now that the H generation, I think, subsequently will understand that. And, not, well, you know, everybody's kind of cynical to begin with, believing all, all the corporate lies that are thrown about every day. And one of them is, uh, you know, this, this will, uh, we're going to shrink this and make this smaller, and uh, we're going to make your uh, iTunes come out in four degree stereo or some, some idiotic concept. And it's just, you know, people aren't going to buy it. They'll buy the technology just because they're a techno freak or you. That's the thing, people think that uh, vinyl had died. And I guess it, it, it was more dormant. I think it was, it was a better word, because it never really died. It, it was dormant and it's, it's making a comeback. In fact, I think it's raging back. Uh, it's definitely alive. I don't know how much of that is gonna be attributed to fad, you know, because some of it could be, you know, it's just a popular thing that people may get into. There's people that's never stopped collecting vinyl. And now there's people that are collecting vinyl and buying new vinyl. And it may burn out after a while, you know, be, just be a small fad and burn out. And then you're going to have those people. And if that becomes the case, some of these things may go out of limited and release again. And then, then you're going to have the same situation. It'll be cyclical. You'll be th having things come back around where people are going to be looking for the things that are coming out now in 10 to 15 years, you know, hoping that they can find what came out, you know, because it flashed for a while and then burned out again, you know. But that, I don't know that for a fact. It could take off and be another, have another good 20 year run. It's gonna last forever. There's nothing that, I mean, it, it didn't go away in the 90s. It's not gonna go away, no. It, it, I really think it will last forever. The one thing that we do hope is that new records, that they're, they're pretty expensive. We're hoping that new releases will come down in price. And, um, and I think maybe the more that they press them, the, maybe they will, I hope so, because it can, it can get kind of expensive um, on the new stuff, now the you know the, the used stuff, you can always you know dig and, and find really good buys on old used records. But new records are still a little bit pricey, so we're hoping that as as it grows, that it'll it'll come down some. So. Just I just want to say that I, Mike and I could have never done all this without all the great help and all the customers that we've had through the years. They, they've kept us here. 
um, the, the fellows that worked for me, Nathan that works for me, there's no way that I would have, if I, I didn't have him I couldn't do it because it takes all of us to, to make it happen and we all have our own little niche at, you know, the store and that sort of thing, so, um, but no, our customers are great to us. I think some of them actually, like Todd, for instance, uh, actually come in just because it's like, oh, I need to, I need to go buy some records, I need to, need to support the store, I need to keep the store open and uh, we, we get a lot of that and we're very, very thankful. They're the reason we're here. So anyway, it's really true though. So <laughs>